he came from the planet's most amazing continent. He was born and raised in a place where the longest river and the widest deserts are located. He introduced to us the rhythm of the drums called Conga Bongo. He started a family here, found friends and even created a new direction in the art. The warmest welcome to Connecting Cultures one more time and on today's episode we're going to be spending some quality time with Bob. Bob Pusorach. Atlantic Ocean, forests, savannas. Bob Usorach was born somewhere in those places, in the western part of Africa. Over the years, different cultures and traditions mixed in his country and new cultures and religions had been introduced. Despite all changes that took place in his nation's life, they managed to remain their national spirit. Bob is from Nigeria, the most heavy populated country in Africa. Bob is smiling and this is how Nigerians are trying to go through the difficulties. In 70s, during the oil boom, Nigeria seemed a very future-proof country. In that time, country's GDP per capita was $1,000. Today, Nigeria is in the list of the poorest countries in the world. Bob Usorak was born in a small African village. His father worked as a chief and photographer. His mother was engaged in sewing and farming, also raising eight children. His mom was the one who became his muse in some ways. Most of his paintings are the episodes from his childhood. The only thing on Bob's memory was the image of mom who was coming home in the evening, tired, exhausted, with the sun and having Bob's little brother on her back. And meanwhile at home, seven children are waiting for their mom and her attention and waiting for something delicious. It was during the war, the Nigerian Civil War, from 1967 to 1970. We, had to, we found ourselves in the village without our father. Our father was in the, in the city, and there was no possibility because of the war to get across to him. So we had to be in the village with just our mom, and it was a very difficult time. Um, as I said, the, my memories of that time has, all, has given rise to my creativity in arts. If you see all my arts, always connected with women with headgear or with load, that was the period of the Civil War, when I had to sit at home with my little ones and wait for my mom to come back in the evening, and the constant sight of women coming from farm with their loads on the head was to become a very uh, source of inspiration for my later creative, creativity in arts, yes. And Everything about me, it's, it's that woman. My logo, it's that woman. It's about that time because it was three, two and a half years of having to sit down. As small, I was about seven years old or so, with my little kids at home, at, with me at home. It was a very difficult time. Not difficult, in the sense, it is now I understand it's difficult. But as a, at that, that what that was just normal. We are in a village and then, but to see how a typical 70-year-old person lives now and how we lived then, then I come to discover it was a very difficult time, yes. All his life, Bob dreamed that he would save his family from the poverty. He was good in studying and he believed in himself. I remember when I used to come home and tell my mom, 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 I am the second person in the class. And she takes my report sheet and says, Oh, second person. Oh, it's okay. And um, who was the first person? And I said, James. And she asked me, how many heads does James have? And then I said, wow, James has only one head and he was the first person in the class. So that was a very big motiv motivation for me. It always uh, it helped me to always work very hard. And I think I would say one of the best moments in my childhood. Otherwise, I would not have been able to get a scholarship to study abroad because it was based on my uh, results of my college education that gave me the, the possibility to get scholarship to study abroad. So I think those early motivations by my mom helped me a lot to understand that I have to do better than every other person. And it helped me with that clean competition, that spirit of competitiveness has always been helping me move ahead in very difficult situations, yes. Bob helped his parents in everything, in raising his younger brothers and sisters, in farming, 
But once he had a free time, he took paper and pencil, he drew, he created and he was making up his own world and moved to the future. After the school graduation, Bob faced an alternative of who to become in the future. Young Nigerian was absolutely sure that he desperately wanted to draw. That was a cry from the heart. Bob Usorak became a student of Biochemical Local University. But a possibility of staring into the microscope got him down and one year later he became a student of an architectural faculty. He was happy, even despite he didn't have money at all. The only thing he had was guitar and inspiration. Guitar was little to help me uh, succeed and survive when I moved from biochemistry to architecture. From, uh, I, started, I finished one year in biochemistry, spent all the money I had, but I knew I had to be an architect because I, could, I wanted to draw. So I changed my specialty. I started all over again in the first year, and I had no money. So the guitar was at hand to help me. And I had a friend, Emma, Emma he, he was my, class, my course mate. So we started singing together playing together. So we could go to the radio and play, let it be, let it be, and they give us $100. We could play on the radio, they give us more. So the guitar helped me to survive a very difficult moment of, in my life. We were very popular in the campus, so they were giving us jobs, we were popular. So because of the guitar, I was able to survive uh, studying in the architecture department because I had less money. I couldn't tell my dad, Papa, send me small money. I was saying, oh, you spend all your money in biochemistry, now you want us to... I tried to be independent as much as I, I could, so the guitar was very helpful too. Of course, Bob got high grades and he studied with a pleasure. For this kind of successful students, the state gave opportunities of education at the universities of other countries. Bob Usorak won the competition and continued his studying in completely unknown country. It turned out that he was sent to Kazakhstan. Bob had no idea about the country. He didn't speak the language, but he was flying in a plane so far. He was the happiest man in the world. Because somewhere far away from his homeland, he will be engaged in what he always wanted to be engaged, and he will have a chance to work and help his family. In 1985, Bobusorak arrived to Almaty from Nigeria to study for architect. At that time, he was 24 years old. It didn't take too long to learn the language, and he found new friends. Along with our Kazakhstani people, he went through a tough way of country's independence formation. Gradually, Bob bought a car and he was involved in private taxi driving for a while. This is how he was making money for his study and accommodation. Once, Bob's Kazakh friends asked him to teach them English. Later, there were more those who wished to learn English. This is how African postgrad of Kazakh Academy of Architecture and Civil Engineering adapted his room at the student's dorm to the educational class and everybody started calling him Mr. Bob. Usually people came and said, Bob, I have IELTS next month, next two months. Bob, I'm going to Canada next two months. I don't know anything in English language. So I said, I said, how do I help them? And I said, OK. So I started experimenting and came up with a system for Russian speakers that teaches them basic grammar in 10 days. Then after 10 days grammar, we move on to basic oral classes. And I, I discovered it was working because I thought the, you should give them the foundation uh, first and then vocabulary uh, uh, later. So that system worked for people who didn't have time. They just had one month, Bob, I have two months. So I came up with that uh, system and I developed a very compact method I call the Bob's method. And he's been very effective. Bob liked being a teacher. He tried to make his classes interesting and created a special atmosphere. Bob rents a small office in Almaty. There are no desks and there is cozy domestic atmosphere in his class. There are many paintings in there. Bob considers himself as founder of a new direction of art, Afro-Expressionism. I discovered I generally the general term for my work would be expressionism but because of my works um, embody a lot of African motifs so I coined the term uh, Afro-expressionism and I can remember some years back a, an artist from America on seeing my, my page in the uh, American Art Gallery the website he said oh, this is the first time I've heard Afro-expressionism are you the founder of that school can I be a member of that school I said oh you are a black 
and from you, what I've seen you draw, you have this African motive in them. So you are also an Afro expressionist. So, so uh, I'm an expressionist, but because I used African motives most of the time, I call myself an Afro expressionist. Yes. So it's a kind of a new movement in art. Most of the things that Bob is doing now came out not accidentally. Something with the help of friends. Something is thanks to the recommendations, and the other things are came out thanks to emotion outburst. All these randomness led to the fact that Bob became an art entrepreneur. He creates original t-shirts. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking your time. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you. This is the place that I've been told so much. This is like your personal boutique yes. shop. Now show us around, please, quite briefly, quite shortly. Tell us everything about this place. I'm very excited. Just as you walk as you on your trance. And you do it, and you think it's in the work of art, it cannot be repeated. Right. Yeah. And it's the, the exclusiveness in that, yeah. in that aspect. Because right. when I was growing up as a child, I was so much addicted to all, I was keen on t shirts that were unique. Yeah. I could be riding on a bus, bus, and I saw somebody with a t shirt, which I knew nobody else was going to have yeah. it with me. I would just stop at the next stop and rush back to, to look for that guy who had that special t shirt. During the time that Bob lives in Kazakhstan, he saw many similarities between his and Kazakhstani people, and the most important thing is respect for the elders. Bob thinks that it's one of the best traditions. I think in these areas of the care for the elderly people in the family, your Kazakh, we also have this, we are responsible, um, taking care of my, my father, my mom, my all, and, and we also help the junior. Uh, members of the family, it's always the responsibility of the elders, uh, the elderly people in the family to help the younger ones. I think Kazakh have the same thing and we take care of our old uh, mom, father, grandmother. It's, uh, I think that we have something common with you here. And respect for somebody who is older than you is always very strict in my, in my family. Like I, I also, like for example, my elder daughter is um, watching a movie on TV and the younger one comes Papa, I want to change, I want to change, I want to watch another person. I said, your elder sister is watching television, you should wait. Um, I said, no, it's your elder, so you should respect her, she's watching now. In terms of architectural ideas, Bob Usorok has not yet fully realized himself. He designed several buildings. Now he's working on designs of apartments and houses. But his main project is still coming up. And of course, he designed his house of dream but so far only in his imagination. Not necessarily the ideal town. I, I, I have always wanted to live near the sea, the water. Besides, I come from a place where I come from a place where you have ocean, right? I think my ideal was going to, should be near the water, some reservoir, where I could go fishing at my Wii. <laughs> Anytime I Wii, I feel like doing it because I, I love fishing. So I would have loved to have a house here and then every morning I could just and start fishing. <laughs> yes, and structurally, I always prefer having, I'm a minimalist when it comes to architecture where I would love to live. I would love to see all my walls white, for example, and every other thing, accessories, could give me the colors I need, like um, colored chairs, but I would have loved to see, no, I, I, I always love to see everything white as the canvas and then I can place whatever I want. That is my, as a personal, uh, preference. Uh. Mr. Bob is very grateful for the fate, for the fact that here in Kazakhstan, he made a family. He has five children. Here, he has friends, and he has an opportunity to do art and learn something new together with those who also decided to come into the world of art. Two guys would come for an interview, and I said, okay, let's start. Take a sheet, he takes a sheet, take a sheet. Just draw a line. And he draws just one line or two lines. I said, you also draw a line. And I said, okay, thank you very much. And I said, you, I'm taking you. They were expecting me to say, okay, draw a house. I said, no, 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 no. With just one line, it's okay to understand. Uh, we, we, watch, uh, uh, we watch what they call this degree of freedom in every segment of the line you draw. And the totality of this freedom, gives that, what you've done, that perfection that we are looking for. It doesn't have to be physically so maybe so, but we always feel it. We can feel those vibrations. Mm -hmm.